He knows it happened. Why deny it? There was a gym full of people there that seen it. This is Jonathan Agroff here for Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Billy Nelson here in Los Angeles, uh, ahead of a huge fight for your boy Martin Bacoli against Jared Anderson. Uh, Billy, how are you finding LA a bit warmer than Scotland, we were saying? Uh, it's a tad warmer, it's actually warmer than Scotland in this, in this room here alone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so talk, talk to me about this fight. Uh, obviously, you know, you've been beating the drum for Bacoli to get a big name. Uh, were you surprised that, that Jared Anderson, you know, took the fight? Well, it wasn't a case that he took the fight. I think it might have been a case of take the fight or don't go in. You know, he's, he's, he's painting a different picture than the truth. Um, we were offered the fight within hours of Fury to Usyk. It was during, the, during that night we got offered the fight and we accepted and when we're here to give him a fight. Mm. Uh, I spoke to Eddie Hearn yesterday and he feels that uh, this could be a terrible bit of matchmaking from uh, the Anderson end. I'm, I'm guessing you agree with that? Of course I, I think Martin on his day could beat any heavyweight in the world. And I, I know he can. Uh, we've just got to go and prove it now. Uh, in terms of how the fight plays out, uh, you know, what would you see as Jared's biggest strengths, and you know, how, how do you think the fight's going to play out? Uh, he's got a good jab. He's got a good movement. He switches stances. That's not going to be an issue because Martin Martin's very good with southpaws anyway. I think when he feels Martin's power, he's going to get the shock of his life. You know, it's not it's no it's no one punch concussion power. It's multiple punches, both hands, head and body, powerful punches, relentless. I mean, it, I don't think there's a heavyweight that punches as many punches as him per round, mm. you know, and he'll make, the lateral movement he's got, he's like a, he's like a super middleweight, you know, the movement he's got. If he produces what he produces in the gym on fight night, he's getting stopped. Do you think it'll be early or, or sort of later? I don't care if it's the first round or the tenth round. As long as his hand gets raised at the end of the fight, mm. points, knockout, don't care. And, you know, do you think, you know, you said for a while you feel like he's avoided. Do you think uh, if he puts in that performance that you're looking for that people will still look to sort of, you know, go past him? Or do you feel like that beating a guy like Jared Anderson here in the United States will give him sort of like the leverage to fight those big, big names? Well, I've already been told that it's a case of you win this fight then you're in the... The wee cliche of people that's uh, going to be on these bills mm. regularly. Uh, your your Caballos, your Joseph Parkers, the, win, the winner Zhang, fight any of them, no problem. Uh, the winner Ruiz and Gerard Miller, and uh, I think that'll be a good fight. You know, you'll fight these guys. Or, or the winner or loser, Daniel and AJ, maybe early part of next year, fight one a day to no problem. Mm. Uh, so one of the talking points from this week has been uh, Martin's comments about you know sparring with Daniel Dubois, and I know Frank Warren, uh, I believe he denied it. I haven't seen the interview properly, but uh, what can you tell us about you know his, his experiences of sparring both Dubois and AJ? Oh, AJ was much much tougher. I mean, it was a much more competitive spar. Daniel was like a rab in the headlights against Martin. What's he denying? Getting his nose broke, quitting. What one? It was one of the other ones. I don't know what I don't know what was said. Mm. But he knows it happened. Why deny it? There was a gym full of people there that seen it. In terms of that fight itself, uh, you know, having seen, you know, Martin spar them and seen what they're about, uh, how do you think that fight will play out, Josh and Dubois? Uh, Anthony Joshua will be him, because he's a better fighter. Mm. And you think he'll, he'll stop him? Probably. Hmm. Uh, just want to talk about uh, some of your other guys. Uh, talk to us about Lewis Crocker and uh, you know what, what, what's next for him. Uh, there will be news shortly, I think, uh, regarding Lewis's next fight. He's due back in Scotland on Tuesday, so whoever he's fighting, whatever date we get, the camp starts Tuesday. Hmm. I'm looking forward to getting him back and the finish here. Then we're straight into 
other camps. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Well, don't get a break. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're working with a lot of fighters right now. Um, tell us about you know some of the other guys you're working with. Well, I've got Sean Lazzarini, who won the Commonwealth Gold Medal. He'll make his debut hopefully in October. He starts camp on Tuesday. Uh, he's, he's on holiday in Italy just now. He's he's had a nightmare at time up, but that guy, if it wasn't for bad luck, he'd have no luck. Uh, but what an outstanding fighter he is. Punches like a horse. Really looking forward to working with him. Uh, I've got Luke Bibby, who's actually over here. He's actually sparring this morning uh, with an Olympian and a guy that won a, a, a medal at the World Championships. And he's 10 and 0, and he's done exceptionally well against him on Tuesday. I was really, really happy with his sparring. He's having his fifth contest of this year. He, he's only been pro six months, but he's having his, he's having his fifth fight this year three weeks tonight on the 23rd of August and then he's fighting on the 4th of October hopefully for a minor title mm. uh, Just want to talk to you about uh, the rematch on December 21st, Fury and Usyk uh, the reports are that Fury's sticking with the same training team of uh, Sugar Hill and Andy Lee, John Fury uh, what would you make of that? Because obviously there was a lot of talk about should he change should he freshen things up Why should he change? Why should he change? They, they've Oh, they've helped get him where he is now. You know, all right, the, it wasn't the ideal that it was a, f a few too many voices in the corner, but if they can rectify that, then that's what a corner. There's a wealth of experience and knowledge there. Mm. So don't change it. And wh wh what would you be saying to him, you know, what differences does he need to make to win the rematch? Focus, concentration. Do what you're doing for around 47 from 1 to 12. And that's the only way, only way you'll beat Isaac. Mm. I, th I think he could stop Isaac. Uh, just finally, I just wanted to talk to you about uh, sort of, I don't know how much you've seen of it, but uh, there's a lot of controversy uh, regarding the Olympics. Uh, you're shaking your head, but you know, we. It's absolutely scandalous. I mean, it's. What are the IC IOC thinking about? Letting a. Letting a a male box a female. I mean, it's it's, it's ridiculous. See if see if a, a, a male hit a male hit my daughter in the street. Mm. You'd, you'd fucking leather them. You'd absolutely leather them. Let alone it being legal in a boxing ring. That is scandalous. Absolutely scandalous. Mm. I mean, why do you think this this was allowed to happen? I mean, obviously the the the, the person in question, I believe, failed gender tests before and was allowed to still fight. Well, I mean, what, why do you think that was the case? Well, I'll tell you what, what, uh, what, how it's been allowed. As Alec Arthur quite rightly said, non-boxing people are making decisions on boxing and have no idea about the sport. Mm. And it's scandalous. It's absolutely scandalous. Alec Arthur's made a very, very valid point, And I agree with him 100%. Mm. Uh, just finally, Billy, uh, the main event here on Saturday night, uh, Crawford and Madrimov. Uh, how do you think it plays out? And should Crawford win, do you think he's capable of beating Canelo? Crawford could beat anybody. The only, th the only thing that will beat Crawford, potentially, is the weight. You know, going too heavy. Because, well, he won his first world title fight against me and, and my boxer uh, in, in Scotland with Ricky Burns. And I knew that night, he's the best fighter I've ever seen live. His, his balance, his movement, his shot selection from both stances is exceptional, it's exquisite. Uh, he's got a very hard fight on Saturday night, one of which I think he'll win because I think he'll just be a wee bit too slick and a wee bit too fast for Majimov. Uh, but moving up to 168 or, yeah. or higher might be his un undoing. But does he have to move up there? Does he have to fight Canelo? I think it's a couple hundred million, <laughs> you know. But no, I, w I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to see that fight at that height and yeah. that that weight. Sorry, because I think it's just a bridge too far, weight-wise, not ability-wise. I think he's a better boxer than Canelo, but weight-wise, it could be his undoing. Mm. Uh, Billy, thanks for your time here in uh, LA. Best of luck tomorrow night, uh, Saturday night, uh, with Martin Bacoli. And uh, yeah, catch up with you soon. Thank okay. you very much. All right.